Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the finished product of uh, Windmill Court, which is an eight bed, eight bathroom HMO, um, but we're not gonna show you the seventh and eighth bedroom which we've located downstairs, um, purely because we haven't furnished them. So we're not, we've not got the eight bed change of use yet, have we? So um, we'll show you that at a later stage um, on the proviso that we do obtain planning to, to, to get that. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been a, a good project, a big project, I guess the biggest we've ever done, right? Mm, probably, yeah. Eight bedrooms, eight bathrooms. Um, really happy with how it's turned out, really. Uh, I don't know, what do you want to add? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we're really pleased with the end result. Obviously, as with any project, it's had its hiccups along the way, things we've had to deal with. We're still waiting for the water to be, the water mains to be yeah. sorted. Um, that is taking a long time, so the front of the house is still looking pretty, pretty much like a building site because there's still a skip and block paving up, and there's a hole with a plank over it. So yeah, it doesn't look great out there at the moment. But we're waiting for the water company to come and sort all that. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously with this property because we went up into the attic and we went out to the back, we used our PD rights. Um, so obviously with a detached property, you can go out four meters um, out that way, and we obviously we did a, a double. Um, room upstairs, so it's a big dormer, um, so the upstairs rooms are lovely and um, they've been probably our best, uh, well one of them is the highest rent we've ever got on a, on a um, single occupancy. On a single occupancy. We, we had the space up there to put, um, one of the bedrooms has got like a little kitchenette, although it doesn't have an oven or a hob, so it's not a full kitchen, it doesn't have full kitchen facilities, um, but it's almost like a, it's got a sink and a, you know, Freezer. fridge freezer could have like a microwave if they wanted that sort of thing so that's the first time we've done that and um, so we're going to see how that goes I mean to be honest it was the second room to go so um so far that's, so that shows that that's you know a, a positive a, a good thing that people are interested in um so yeah yeah I guess on the letting side of things um it's difficult I mean obviously you can put an advert up and have you know pictures are examples blah 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 which we like to do but when we do such a high ticket uh high ticket rooms um i sort of feel like you do need to show a good quality picture of the actual product so we always basically i sold three rooms before we started advertising we started advertising one week ago today um and the fourth bedroom which is the second most expensive room in the house is under two people want it uh, so by four o'clock today that'll be sold so then we're just left with two rooms um, I've got a few viewings over the weekend, so yeah, it's 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 flying out, and actually, all the most expensive rooms are going first. So um, yeah, kind of really happy with with that. Trying to get it filled, or we will get it filled before Christmas. Um, I guess some challenges are the internet. We've never done a three-story um, conversion, so um, yeah, we've got commercial graded Wi-Fi boosters and stuff like that. So we'll see how that goes. It's all like new territory for us, but again, it's kind of our bread and butter standard high spec that we do um, throughout. And like Alicia says, the project hasn't been without its challenges. So this is the second project we've done with this new set of builders who are fantastic. And um, like, as an example, one major mistake was we said that we wanted it exactly the same as the previous project. Um, so as an example, the architrave, we had a massive issue when we came around one week and inspected that they put really thin architrave. It was now, 40 mil. It was the same as what it was before, but it was thin. And we, we yeah, we had to... No, it um, was the same style as it same was Same style, before, yeah. But, but it was a thinner... So it was 40 mil, which is like, you know, just over an inch. And then I thought, this looks terrible. It's such a big, grand house. It can't have skinny, mm. insignificant architrave. Um, so... Unfortunately, I did make them take it all off and put the correct width architrave all back on. Um, so obviously they weren't pleased with themselves for that, but they did do it because um, I did say that, you know, it really doesn't look great. And even the electrician, who's nothing to do with the building firm, he came in and he said, and when I said what had happened, he said, oh yeah, me and the boys had come in and we said, why have they put that on there? So it wasn't just me that thought it looked terrible. Um, the other the other problem that we had, which was more kind of trying to keep morale up, is that we had so many issues with the kitchen. Um, obviously, the kitchen we got from a supplier that we get a really cheap discount on through a landlord discount scheme. But the problem with that supplier is that um, 
if there's something missing or they find that they need something extra or that sort of thing, it takes weeks for these items to come in. So the kitchen fitters were getting really upset because they were saying, look, you know, we're losing money on this job now because it's taking so long to get things. They're coming here having to do bits and then like come back at a later point when, you know, just do little fiddly bits. They were getting really upset about it. So I was trying to sort of keep morale up and say what the problem was, you know, that we're trying to use this supplier to keep costs down and things. Eventually they did, it all came together, but there was a few little niggly bits that I thought, well, you could just tell that they weren't that impressed. They, not that they weren't impressed, but they were kind of lost their... Frustrated. Yeah, that it was kind of that attention to detail kind of gone awry. And so I got the project manager in and I said, look, can you fix this and this? Because it doesn't look right. You know, it's not right. There was, a, there was some things that were wonky. The doors, because we've gone for really dark colored doors, and the inside, like it's got like a silver lining. If you don't line the doors properly, then you can see the silver lining because you might have like a skinny gap on one side and a wider gap on the other. So it just looks silly, you know, you could see all this white, you know, or silver sort of coming through. So I got the PM to just align all the doors again. So little things like that that have been, it seems like you're being picky, mm. but they make such a big difference. I mean, the kitchen now looks really good. Whereas before it came in and it just looked like someone had not cared which which probably they hadn't because like i said of all the the feelings of frustration with it but it just needed a bit more tweaking to make it look amazing um but that's what our job is is to pick up on these things and push to get it perfect and push to make sure that those little fine details that might just seem you know uh just silly or you know not non-important or you know on their individual merit don't, they're not that big a deal but actually when the whole collective that comes together it makes a difference from walking in somewhere going, mm, yeah, it's, it's nice, and go, going in somewhere and thinking, wow, like this place is amazing, it looks really, yeah. really great. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's it. And then, you know, I guess my job was kind of, as we're here, it's like, right, this doesn't quite feel homely. What can we do to, to make it feel homely? Do you know what I mean? So we were sort of like the artwork and the lamp, because it's quite a big area. So we need to kind of fill it, if that makes sense. So imagine when you didn't have curtains on and, and all that sort of stuff. It just you, we've got to get the feel, your gut feeling, right uh, in the property because that's uh, really important to us, and that's what helps sell the room ultimately, isn't it? People decide on their gut feeling and how they think they feel about the property, so to speak. So we think we've well, hit think, the nail on the head, haven't we? Really? I think sometimes when you when you're putting a room together and trying to make it feel homely. Sometimes sometimes it's blindingly obvious what a room needs and other times it like takes a bit of kind of getting used to the room if that makes sense. Like you yeah. hear when people move into a house, that they move into a house and they don't start works immediately because they want to try and feel how the house feels and how it works, how it flows, that sort of thing. So with this room in particular, the other rooms were fine, didn't really have a problem with that. But with this room it just kind of, it didn't gel straight away and I couldn't kind of put my finger on it. Yeah. We'd put the sofa a different orientation. Yeah. And so the plug points were for the TV to go in that corner. And actually when the sofa arrived and the, and the dining table arrived, because the dining table was gonna go there, the sofa was across like that, it just didn't work. So we had to kind of move it around a little bit and see what we could do. So I think now it feels much more like we've got zones. So we've got like a, the lounge zone, sort of relaxing zone. You've got the dining zone. And you've got the walkthrough. And the walkthrough, yeah. which is clear. So. It does take a bit of kind of seeing how a room works. Mm. We, we weren't sure whether to put curtains or blinds or something up because obviously there's no one looking in. And we don't always put curtains and blinds in the lounge area, but this one really did need it. So by putting that up, it just filled a bit more space. We put like a little shelf up there just again to just add a bit of homeliness mm. um, because it is such a large room. And I guess when we did the previous project where it had the kitchen, the dining and the lounge all in one room, despite it being probably a bigger room than this is, because it had those three elements in it, it already feel, felt quite um, full and, you know, complete, I guess. Whereas this one, there was something missing. So I think we've put, you know, we've put the nail on the head with it now and we've added a few little bits. Like he says, the lamp doesn't seem like a lot, but it's, you know, it makes such a difference just to have like something five else. pounds from my gear? Six something? pounds. Six pounds, well. bargain. So um, you don't need to go and spend like seventy pounds on a floor lamp, do you? Just need to, no. Yeah. No, I was quite chuffed with that find. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I think that's 
I think that's it. Like, we're again really proud, really happy. You know, when we're doing the viewings, it just. Oh, one of the things proud. you haven't mentioned is this is the first time that we've used the fire system that we've used in here because it being a three story, you have to have a grade A system, which meant that there's a control panel out there. It's it's really high tech. I mean, the guy who came was explaining it to me. I mean, normally we go around and we test all the fire alarms, and you know that's part of our monthly checks and things. But actually with this one, the guy was saying that it's all linked to their office. So actually they would know if the fire alarm had gone off before, probably even the tenant had known. Um, it's all sort of linked and digital and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, it's our first time putting this in. It's worked really well for the time being. Seems really slick. Um, and to be honest, I'm kind of contemplating putting it in, in any of our ones because at the point where we put fire alarm systems in, actually these ones are no more expensive. I think the guy said to me it's maybe one to two hundred pounds more expensive to put it in, but they are fail safe. Like they can't go wrong. Basically, that's the way he was explaining it to me. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know whether we do so put that in but... moving forward. Um, so I think other than that, that is pretty much everything else. I think that's it. I think that's a massive explanation. We could obviously go into massive details about the triple uh, double fridge freezers, double double ovens, and double washing machines and tumble dryer and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But um, I guess we'll show you the little slidey slidey video, nice bit of music, and um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found it all interesting. Give us a like and a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're watching. Like our Facebook and YouTube and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, without further ado, thanks for watching and um, we'll see you next time. Bye.